with great joy that I greet the church and the ones who are present, the ones who are watching us online as well, with the glorious peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do the brethren already know where we are going to open the Bible? The book of Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 5. We are studying the book of uh, Songs, Song of Solomon for a while already. A uh, book that for many is a little scary because it is interpreted in a, with the eyes of the flesh. But the experience that the Holy Spirit has given us have seen secrets and mysteries wonderful that are being revealed at every verse with regards to the prophetic meaning of the time which we are living. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are going to read today, we are going to meditate on the same word. I'm going to read verse 1 of chapter 5. We're going to read I have come to my my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my mirth with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with honey. I have drunk my wine with milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink, yes, drink deeply, O oh beloved one. Chapter six, chapter 6 says the following. Uh, where have you turned your eye to the beloved one? We are going to seek with you. My beloved has come down to his garden, to the garden, to beads of spices. Now verse 10. Who is she who looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? I went down to the garden of nuts to see the verdure of the, the valley, to see whether the vine had but Now, verse 12, before I was even aware, my soul had made me as a church of my noble people, my beloved God. Your presence is does good to our soul through our song that we sang, through the prayers that have been made, we have already been able to experience the greatness of your power and your mercy. And now as we meditate on your word, add to what was already being prepared from eternity to each one of us tonight. And that tonight, as you have already said, may be a night of salvation. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. The church may be seated. Yesterday we had the message, the last verse, chapter 4. The brethren who are here can already remember. And the message was all around the return of the Lord Jesus in a wonderful way. This, the three years of his ministry, the healings and the, the, the miracles and the promise. I'm going to the Father. A few got scared, but he said, I'm not going to leave you orphan. I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit comforter. And the wind of the north comes, blows out, and leaves his mark, and promises that the south, the wind from the south will come, and the wind keeps blowing to this day, and the presence of the Holy Spirit is, is moving in our midst. Don't think that you who entered here tonight according to your own will, don't be deceived. The Holy Spirit, the wind of the Lord, the wind from the north is represented on the wind from the south. The person of the Lord Jesus in the presence of the Holy Spirit has convinced your heart to be here tonight. And here, tonight, is a banquet. There is a banquet that has been prepared by God. And before we began our service, as we were praying for the service, the Lord had already shown this. He has shown that He was provide a a table with plenty and many here would become aware of the kingdom of the Holy Spirit something that he had not known before the Lord is he is in his place and he wants to give a, a wonderful experience Be, believe in your heart 
let down all your defenses, human defense, your baggage, psychological, emotional, cultural, and familial, and allow this wind to blow in your life. That's my invitation tonight. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak your heart. More than he has already spoken when the, the children prayed and when a few people in the church uh, stood up to glorify the Lord. Uh, uh, so as when the instrumentalists were playing and the church prays, the Holy Spirit is already acting, but the Lord wants to move even further in your heart. Until the end of the service, by faith, you will be have a wonderful experience that was given by the by the Lord. The Book of Song of Solomon, as I said, is a book that is poorly interpreted by many religions, many people who study the Bible. It was pleasing to the Lord to choose a people that gave heed to His voice. There is a people upon the earth that has been paying attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit. There is a people upon the face of the earth that has felt the presence of the Lord and that has not simply gone only to the latter, but has gone much farther, has understood mysteries, wonderful mysteries revealed by the Holy Spirit of God, like the one that I just mentioned. Jesus came, saved, He died and resurrected, and sent His Holy Spirit. It was poured out abundantly upon all flesh, and from the beginning, from the primitive church, He has been operating and preparing a bride to be raptured. This is going to be the bride of the Lamb. The book of Revelation uses this expression, the wedding of the Lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God, as John said. John the Baptist said, when he saw Jesus, he said, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed be the Lord. He had recognized that the one was the one that was promised by God to come, to suffer, to die, to guarantee us eternal life. And soon after comes the Holy Spirit acting and operating. And He comes to bring all sorts of benefits from eternity. He blows up onto the garden. He visits the church. He visits the ones who are in need of knowing Him. They have the desire to know Him. And He visits them with the divine operation that come from eternity. Those are spiritual gifts. Those are expressions and talents. They are fruits that only the Holy Spirit can give. Those are the result of a life that seeks the Lord, that seeks the presence of the Lord. And this bride is being prepared, is being adorned. Their garments is being given to her. Those are wedding gifts, their wedding garments, their special garments. And this church, this bride is being prepared. The, the church knows the festive song. Uh, when the brethren sang during the period of praise, when they heard glory and hallelujah from the part of the church, it's a festive sound. It's the Holy Spirit walking in our midst and burning in our hearts and awakening in us a gratitude that we can barely know how to explain. We have been brought here into the presence of the Lord and we could not have imagined what we would meet and what have we found. What you and I have found when we came into the presence of a God has prepared a a kingdom for us. We see a temple that was furnished. We see the Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit is what the most precious in eternity. My brother and sister, give worth to this blessing. Give worth to a kingdom where the Lord has provided all things for our lives, for our earthly life, but much more importantly, to preparing us to enter into the eternity with the Lord. And the great day will come. Don't be deceived. Whether you like it or not, Jesus will return. And it's not a coincidence that the name of our church is Maranatha. Because Maranatha means, in Hebrew, the Lord Jesus come. And in verse 5, or first verse of chapter 5, it says, I have come to my garden, my sister, my spouse, I have gathered my myrrh with spice, we have eaten my honeycomb with my wine, I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink, yes, drink deeply, O oh beloved ones. If you are here, you're not by chance. The Holy Spirit brought you here to understand what is being done, 
in preparation for this great feast. He has already come to the garden. He is already present in our midst. He has gathered all the adoration and glorification in the contrite life that we have. The Lord here is speaking about the suffering that we have on this earth as we are waiting for the return of our Lord. It's not easy. And the Lord Jesus has not deceived us. He said, in the world we will have afflictions, but do not be afraid. I overcame it. And when did he overcome? On the cross of Calvary, he said, Father, on your hands I deliver my spirit. The suffering that you and I went through to abdicate of the things of the flesh, to sanctify ourselves, to set us self apart, to say no to sin and to death and to things of this world. It, this is myrrh. This is a suffering that pleases the Lord because it comes to Him as a, a frankincense, as a smell. The spices is what brings uh, the taste, seasoning. And the Lord has given us a meaning of life when He brought us into a pr His presence. And the spices, they are part of our lives, daily lives. When we give worth to the salvation, we have a new way of life. It is the meaning of life, what the world does not have, because many lives, people that have plenty of uh, financial means, they take their own lives. Maybe and was maybe we don't have the thickest, uh, richest bank account, but we know the true meaning of life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I ate my honey and my honeycomb, my bread. Every message that we hear, we hear the Holy Spirit speaking on the life of the vessels that are being used. And every message that we hear, sometimes it's a text that we heard many times, 300 times. If you're in the presence of the Lord from your childhood, you hear a message, a text being read, and you say, how many times I heard this? And then the preacher begins to pray, preach, and then you say, I never heard this revelation. Those are the honeycombs and sweetness of the word. This is something that the world doesn't have. And it's something that man without the revelation of the Holy Spirit does not have. It doesn't matter how many courses you take, theology, sociology, psychology, whatever you take, those secrets, only do the simple ones that the Lord looked at them and said, do these ones I'll give my revelation because they are my servants, but they are my friends. The Lord Jesus revealed those miracles because he, he kept it from the wise ones to and to give to the ones who have simple hearts, the ones who have and do enjoy these revelations. I ate, I drank my wine with my milk, my bread. The Holy Spirit has been poured out. Uh, before only the priests had access, and today any one of us can go to the presence of the Lord and plead him by the blood of Jesus. This is the wine and the power, this blood that is his, his Holy Spirit that brings us into the Holy of Holies and reveals to you mysteries and secrets that you may not have imagined. The one is what brings joy. The first miracle of the Lord Jesus was to transform your water into wine in a wedding. He took away everything that was born and brought joy. Imagine water being served on a party. There's nothing worse than that. It's without meaning or without taste. He transformed something that had no meaning or taste into one of the or of our greatest joys, which is the assurance of eternal life. And you went in the presence of the Lord. Maybe your life had no meaning, had no taste, your life or motivation. But now with the presence of the Holy Spirit that is revealed through the wine, you have joy of life. You wake up in the morning already having conversation with the Lord and asking, Lord, go ahead, open the door, send your angels, give me victories. And at the end of the day, you see that if we're not for the Lord, oh, if we're not the Lord in my life, and then you go to sleep, glorify Him. It's a relationship, it's a friendship that we have with our Jesus. The milk is presence. You have drank your milk. Milk speaks about the basic food for the newborn. You who are entering here, you don't know much. You need the basic. And the Lord comes and deals with you with great joy, great love, and give you the milk. In the beginning, those information there, small, so that you can absorb. See the care of the Lord. And as you grow, you receive more experiences and you will enjoy of new mysteries that you may have never imagined. And everything has been prepared. The wedding of the Lamb. So this is a moment in the church desired the most. But there is a new people. There is a new church. 
the book of songs, we see the whole Lord Jesus as a groom and the faithful church as the bride, the beloved church. There's not a bride that's not the lover. Jesus wants to love her, but she does not allow herself to be loved. Is there a faithful church that does not hear the Lord? Is a church that when the the Lord knocks at her, her door and she says, "Oh, I already uh, put my clothing to sleep. I took my sandals off. I don't want to open the door." But when He knocked at my door, my heart was shaken, and I got up and I saw that He put His hand through the gap of the door, and His hand was soaked in myrrh. But when I opened the door, He had already left. Is a people that is not paying attention. They know they have Bible, they have song books, they sing. Go t- with God. May God bless you. May, may the Lord help you. But they just say it without uh, an experience with the Lord Jesus in their heart. They have not already understood the mystery of the mo- death and resurrection of Jesus and that the promise that we will, He will return one day. And this church has already been lost. This people is lost. She says, I was asleep, my, my heart was paying attention. It's impossible. Nobody that is sleepy can be attention. The great vigilant is the one that uh, sleeps because whenever he sleeps, the robber comes and sees, and, and the vigilant guard, he doesn't, uh, he says, I never saw it. Isn't it like, what happens with people uh, driving is, you know, I'm tired, but I'm, I'm going to get to the plot spot. And when the accident happens, they have not even seen what happened. They may even have lost their life because they slumbered, they slept while driving. So it's impossible to be paying attention and to sleep. So, but the Lord Jesus is here every service and is asking us to be vigilant because at any moment I will return to take my church. We cannot sleep because when the groom comes, after the groom has come, when the beloved of our soul has come to rapture us, is going to be asked in verse 1 to chapter 6, Where has your beloved gone? Is the unfaithful church asking to the faithful one? O fairest among you women, where has your beloved turned aside? My brother, many churches and many institutions have preached at the Lord Jesus coming and but there is going to be an, a second chance afterwards. Don't be deceived. That's the greatest lie that the enemy has introduced in the midst of the Christians. He is going to come. He's going to rapture his church, and whoever is being left will be left. There is no second chance. But even if you had, I ask you, with the Holy Spirit and our midst, touching you, making it shake. Many times we sleep and fall and sin. Imagine without the Holy Spirit, because. The Holy Spirit is going to rapture the church. The Holy Spirit is going to come and take His beloved bride. R- the word rapture is, 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 means that you're being taken fast. So when you take a pluck a flower out of the garden, it's, it's a twink of an eye. You're not going to have any time for anything. That's why we need to be vigilant. And this, faith, this unfaithful church knows that the faithful one is the mo- most fair of all of them. The beloved is in the glory with his bride. The wedding of the Lamb has already started. The feast has already started. And the answer comes from my My beloved has come to the... The groom has already come. What was myrrh is now balm. But to, today we go through, which is suffering, we complain many times. We need to abdicate from the flesh. I need to look to the other side when it's seen, when I feel desire to do something wrong. This is a suffering. This is murder. But when we come into the glory, it's going to be balm because the comfort will come. The Bible says that our eyes, all tears will be dried up from our eyes. Blessed be the Lord. I have come to my garden to the beds of spices, to feed in flock in the gardens and gather lilies and my beloved. We, we need to follow the, the model. The model is only one, it's not the pasture or anything. 
is Jesus of Nazareth. He is the only model that we have. If anyone came here and said, I'm going to enter this church, if there's anyone that is worth enough for me to uh, copy, I will follow this person. Don't do this. Jesus is present. He is the great model. He never fails. We may fail at any moment. May the Holy Spirit have power to deliver us. But Jesus is perfect. And so greatest model he is the one to whom we look at. And we say, I want to be like you, Lord. Jesus is considered as a lily of the valley. You know, an important detail of the lily uh, is uh, mud and everything that is dirty. And then the lily blossoms and at a uh, certain point it blossoms up. And, and the lily is a very white flower. It's pure. The dirt is there, but, he, but the flower is pure there. Jesus came as a man was born out of a woman. He felt the abandonment. He felt uh, that was being despised, but he would never sin. He was he was the only human, that pure, clean of any sin. And this is the model that we need to look after. We need to be like him. And if we look like him, we will be like him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We may be saying, oh, that's impossible. But it's not impossible. Because if it was not impossible, he would not have said, be holy because I am holy. Jesus, Lord Jesus said, and the Bible says then, verse 2 of chapter 6 says, and I, I came to gather the lilies. A few of our, our family members have already been gathered, but we are going to go to heaven to be in the garden of the Lord in eternity. And on this garden is going to be any, any weed, or any sadness or any pain. One of the children said on this day, he prayed saying, it's not going to be, I'm not going to fall, I'm not going to get a boo boo. And the Lord is preparing this garden for us. First, Sam said, who is this? Who is like a beautiful like the moon, beautiful like the sun. The church reflects the glory of God. Jesus is a the Son of Justice, and we, as some of the Lord, receive this shining. We show in our testimony that this church is about to leave. This church is about to go up to live with the Lord, and is formidable, awesome as an army with banners. And when we enter into eternity, can you imagine how many banners we're going to have in our hands of the victories that we had here, and the sustenance of being faithful to the end? In inheriting eternal life and assurance of salvation. I have done I went down to the Garden of Nuts to see the Virgin of the Valley, to see whether the vine had budded and the pomegranates pomegranates had bloomed. Before I was even aware my soul had made me uh, as the chariot of my noble people. My brother, it's worth to be vigilant because he's going to return at any moment. And as we enter into the eternity, we will say it was worth it. When I least expected, the fourth trumpet will be sounded. And you'll hear the voice of uh, our names being said, as John heard in the book of Revelations. Come up, I'm going to show you the wonders that I have prepared for you. Who is this who is, comes up with the... Uh, Hear the voice of the Spirit that is coming to you. Stay in your heart. I want this blessing. I want you to the glory of God.
Glória a Jesus. Aleluia. Glória a Deus. O que você está ouvindo aqui hoje são palavras de Deus. Nós não temos nada para pregar. We have nothing to preach. There's nothing that comes from us. We can even say as servants, Peter and John at the port of the temple. I have no gold or silver, but I have, I have, I give you. Get up and walk in the name of Jesus. It was their expression. It's also our expression. It's great joy that we tell you. The words of the Lord need to be heard, and they need to be heard because they're words of life. The Lord has shown through His infinite mercy, through the spiritual gifts, that there is a woman that entered here afflicted by a disappointment in their family and disagreement. But the Lord is asking to tell her, in the same way that happened to you, if you have faith and pray, this is going to go away. And it's not going to bring sadness to your heart anymore. And you are going to be used for the salvation of your family members. There is also a woman that the Lord has shown that entered here asking for help. She's afflicted. And the Lord has shown that her suffering is because of the price of sin. Something that happened, that gap that she allowed, she sinned, and she's very afflicted. But the Lord is saying, He's operating in your life. He's making a spiritual surgery. He's moving the sin of sin, the stain of sin that was bringing anguish to your heart. And also, there is a man in our midst. The Lord has shown that He has good intention. He wants to do. He wants to build his spiritual life. He has the desire, but he doesn't know how. He didn't know. But he entered here tonight, and he's facing with the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the ones who can build and know that can build in spiritual life. And what are the details that you need to learn? You need to build your house on the rock. Spiritual life you need to be founded and standing only on Jesus, because He is the cornerstone. The Bible calls Jesus the cornerstone, the, the fundamental stone when you build an important building there is a the cornerstone they, they make a, a ceremony and from that stone that is is set all the other walls are built and, and if jesus is the the cornerstone of your life your house will never fall especially if you are founded on the rock and uh, what you need to what you need to build your profession your spiritual life is prayer fasting, serving the Lord, living with the bread and in this fellowship. And the most important is that it, the foundation of our lives need to be found well-founded because this is what generates our salvation, our eternity with the Lord. That's why my brother, my sister, my you who visit us tonight, be aware that you enter here to understand this is not a moment to be playing around as a Christian. There's no moment to be playing as a Christian. There's no time anymore because of the signs, the rooms of wars and wars and for everything that's happening around the world, you know that soon Jesus will return. The moment is to be vigilant because soon he will t return to take us. Let us stand up and sing a little bit of the song before we finish. May our heart be in this position, wishing to be vigilant to be prepared to enter into the heavenly dwellings where we'll hear come bless of my father
Glory to Jesus, hallelujah. This church today is inviting you to experience something deep, a salvation that was guaranteed through this sacrifice, through this word that we just sang. It's so much love, my brother and sister. It's so much love, suffering, pain, humiliation, so that you and I would have salvation. If you think that your merit is too much, Jesus' merit was much greater. He suffered for you and I, so that it is worth to be vigilant. It's worth to sanctify yourself, because before I felt him, my soul was placed in the cart, carriage of the excellent people. When we least expect, we're going to be in the glory with the Lord. Bless be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Or not, come Lord Jesus. Lord to Jesus. Stay with us, you who visit us tonight, who are visiting us, who heard these words of eternal life. Stay here and be vigilant. Stay and pray so that we can enter to the wedding of the Lamb. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to have now a word of adoration. I will praise our name for this day that is coming near. It's the day when you are going to take your church. We praise the Lord because you set us apart. You have set us apart as a faithful church. We thank you because we can hear your voice, because you are, we are under your hands, because we, we are praising because you have chosen us. We are praising because to this day you have blessed us. We praise the Lord because soon we will be in uh, heavenly dwellings, Lord, where there is not going to be any tears or sadness, Lord. There's going to be only a song of joy. Your church is waiting for this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The other servant can also pray the Lord, praise the Lord. I praise you for this precious moment. In your presence, Lord. We praise you for the food. We praise you because you answer our, you fill our hearts. We can say that our heart was burning, Lord, to be in your presence. We know that it's going to be a blessed week. Fill your spirit, Lord. Help us to remain in your presence, Lord. Walking towards your eternity. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Lord, send us home peacefully. Take us home in security back to our homes, into our life, lovely shores. And as your servant has said, may we have a night of blessing because you will do according to your infinite mercy. You serve a service and adoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. And you who visit us, you are very welcome in the name of Jesus. Well, I hope that we felt home here. And our desire is that you feel like this is a nest of love, a love that comes from the Lord, goes through us, and it is related to you. If you desire, remain where you are. We would like to go to you and to greet you and give a, a blessing personally. And hear from you. If any part of this service, the Holy Spirit visit your heart. We want to hear what this moment was. We believe that the Holy Spirit walked among us and in His presence. And don't live here without confirming this blessing and testify of what the Lord has done on your heart. We are here available to pray for you, to give assistance. 
with uh, friendly love and we say goodbye to everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus.